Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living in retirement with having. When I sit here in the middle of a space, I'm thinking about my life. I'm wondering what is my life about today and what is my legacy today? When I look back over my life, I think of all the things that I've accomplished, the number of books I've written, the number of translations I've done, the number of lessons I've taught, the number of clients I've served, the number of people or friends or family that I've helped. What about you? What do you think about with regard to your legacy of your life? If God called you home today and you were going to the afterlife, what would you say to the Lord? How would you stand before God? What would the Holy Ghost be saying to the angels of all the earth? Would they be saying, congratulations, you did a good job, or thank God you finally got it after a while? Or would you just be standing there going, gosh, I don't know what to say to God. Left at the pearly gates, not sure if you're getting in or not. Purgatory is sometimes what they talk about, that place that's sort of in the middle ground between heaven and hell. But some people today don't even believe in heaven anymore, and most people don't believe in hell. We often talk about how we're walking through hell, going through hell, staying in hell, feeling in hell, or just being in hell because of relationship. Because let's face it, it's usually a relationship that puts us somehow in hell. It might be an employer, it might be a bad boss, it might be a matronly manager, it might be something else entirely. It might be a health issue, it might be COVID, it might be some other form of a pandemic, epidemic, or well, just society forced illness. You see, in society, we have a lot of people that are mentally unwell. They're mentally unwell because they don't recall where their boundaries begin and end in the world. They think, I am Lord of my domain. I will be in charge of this house. I will be in charge of my children, regardless of what their age is. And I will carry on my torch for my God, my way. The problem is they sometimes want to carry on their torch for their God in a way that harms people. And if it harms people, then it's not for God. It's for your selfishness, your lordliness, your desire to be in power over someone. And I'd like to ask you, who the fuck left, died and left you God? And I will swear, because men of my age and station do swear. I can remember sitting in a Panera in Noblesville, Indiana, listening to a young man in his 30s talking to a man in his late 40s, early 50s, and literally swearing with the F-bomb every other word talking about how fucking great that his company was and how they would help him solve something. And I just sat there sort of pondered, you know, and all the time that he's been sitting there touting his company for the last half an hour to an hour, I could have solved the man's problem if he just sat down with me in that same hour. But with age comes wisdom, and that's something I've learned. And I probably thought I was a hot shit when I was in my 20s too. But the reality is I knew one thing, that it wasn't my job to embarrass my family and it wasn't my job to not let my heart sing. But what I'm talking about is what are you doing in your life right now to ensure that you have the best life possible? Or are you busy trying to harm someone's life, monkey with someone's life, play a black game in someone's life? What I mean by that is a satanic, dark idea that you're trying to play with someone's life. You're trying to interfere with the tools that they have to use for their life. You're trying to upgrade yourself by stealing intellectual property that doesn't belong to you in this lifetime. Are you trying to harm someone's access to transportation? Are you trying to harm someone's access to mobility and to, well, elevation of their career? Because if you are, what you're really saying is, I'm a slave to that fool. I'm a slave to that individual. Because if you are not a slave to that individual, you'd be living your life, excelling in your life on your own accord with the way that God chooses to gift you in your life. You'd be recognizing the gifts that God had given you in your life and you'd be trying to use them to the highest level that you could play at in life. I'm a marketing person. I have been most of my life. I've been a photographer. I've been a videographer. I've even done some things for high schools, for schools. I've taught languages. I've done a lot of things to make a living. Sometimes I've done it with multiple income streams all at the same time so I could ensure that my family had an enjoyable life and we had plenty of free time to go places, do things. Now we didn't always plan well about taking vacations and that's probably why I'm interested in doing that now. But I'm like, you know, I did all that before. Been there, done that. I want to do something different. But in order to do that, I have to change my life. In order to do that, I have to kind of plan my life. And when I plan my life, but somebody monkeys in my life, I get pretty upset about it. As most people like you and others would. If someone was constantly monkeying in your food, you'd be upset. If someone was constantly trying to make you sick, you'd be upset. If someone was constantly abusing you, you'd be madder than hell. And if someone was constantly raping you, you'd be furious and raging as well. So let's be clear. What is your legacy today? What are you going to be accountable for to God today? 
You see, it doesn't really matter whether you're a Christian, a Wiccan, a pagan, or agnostic, or somebody who just doesn't believe in God, because either way, you're still going to stand before God. That's kind of the marvelousness of God, that he can say, you can believe in whatever the hell you want to or nothing at all, but you're still going to stand before me before you go back into, I don't know, reincarnation, more training for your soul before you get to the next elevation, the next section of life. And we've done enough past life regressions in this world to know that there's some truth to that, that people do come back in different ways. And they can, marvelous memories of something. Or is it really the dark side of the world seeping through in some satanic force? And I don't think so. What I think is that Satan is alive and well in people today. And Satan being alive and well in people today are the people who lie to themselves about what is and isn't their rights in someone else's life today. It usually is because they have totally failed to grasp that in elementary school. They have clearly forgotten what it is to know what is theirs and what is someone else's. What is their property? What is someone else's possessions? What is their body? What is someone else's privacy of whatever, even their genitalia? You see, in life we have moments of time to speak the truth and someone's illness is not your business. Someone's mental health is not your business. Someone's doctors and information and counselors and advisors and psychologists and psychiatrists or whatever the hell they're doing in their life to put their life in order is not your business. Your business is your business. My business is my business. How you make a living is up to you. How I make a living is up to me. How you earn your money for your life is completely your privacy. How I choose to make multiple income streams for my life and use all the ta skills and talents that I have earned and experienced and learned and developed in my life is up to me. Am I making sense or are you still not getting it? If you are monkey in someone else's life without consent, if you are violating federal law, international human rights laws, or any kind of treaty that we are standing for in America and around the world, you look like a fool to me.